Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And this video is about thinking React, how to think in a React way. Um, also, this is a way to think about reactive com web components. So whether you're using Angular, Vue, React, or you're just using standard web components, Svelte, Stencil, this lesson should help you think the way that those frameworks mean you to think the sort of the reactive way but I'm going to be explaining it from the point of view of react but generally in all of these frameworks you're allowed to create what's called a component and a component what you're doing is you're encapsulating parts of your user interface um, as a thing okay so instead of creating one file one HTML file that has like the code for your slider or the code for your um, your header your navigation your footer and then separately you have a CSS sheet that talks the styling of it all and then separate JavaScript that handles all the interactive buttons what you're doing is you're encapsulating each piece you're saying hey there's this thing that I have that's a slider that's gonna be styled this way that's going to be interactive in this way and looks this way and you encapsulate it into a component okay so generally in react the way it works is that you have your index.html and from there you bring in the react library and what the react library does is that it can inject components created with React into your HTML. The typical design of a React app is that usually you create one parent component, one component that's gonna encompass all your other components called app. So essentially React is going to inject app into your index.html. And then um, app, this app component is where you start breaking down the rest of your site. So in this example, I might have some other components that I create called top middle and bottom, representing the top, middle and bottom of my website. You can break it up however you want. And then in my top component, I have more components. I have a component for my navigation menu. I have another uh, component for my hero. So you start creating this component tree. It's kind of like creating your own DOM, a virtual DOM. Okay. So that's essentially what's going on when you're using React. You're creating this component tree. and the thing, the, the point of React is to create your, make your website fast. And there's two ways it does this. One, by creating a single page application, your website only really needs to load once in the browser on initial load. The set, second thing you can do to speed up your website is that as things change, it doesn't have to constantly re-render your entire website. It only has to re-render the parts that change. Now, how does it know which parts of your website changed? It's based on the way you store your data. Okay, so each of these components are like their own little chunk of JavaScript with their own variables, their own functions, um, etc. Now there's a particular way to store your variable in something known as state. State is just essentially, think of it as data. Okay, it's literally just certain data, but it's data that when it changes, we're gonna rebuild that component, okay? So let's say I had a piece of data in top, okay? Now, if that piece of data, the, and then we, let's say we stored that in our state, okay? And again, how you do that, that's different between framework, how you store that reactive data. It's usually referred to as reactive data in the sense that the data reacts to changes. So in React, it's called state. Um, in Vue, I think they just refer to it as your data. Um, in Svelte, I, can, I, don't, I don't really think there's really a special name for it in a lot of the other frameworks. But Let's say your state was the number one, and then it changed to the number two. What happens is that since that state belonged to top, the top component re-renders. But when top re-renders, it re-renders all of its children. So that means navigation would re-render, and hero would re-render. But app, middle, bottom were not changed at all. So in that case, only this part of my website got rebuilt which is a lot faster than rebuilding the whole thing. So that's the benefit of React. By being able to break up your components and the important pieces of data throughout your website, you can make it where not everything has to be constantly updating. Now, what if that number, that piece of state that I had in top, really was only needed for the hero? The navigation doesn't really use that data. Then what I could do is I could move the state down. Instead of storing it in my top component, I store it in my hero component. 
So now when that data changes, instead of re-rendering top navigation and hero, it would only re-render hero. So this is what we generally mean by saying, hey, we want to move the state down. You always want state, the data that your components depend on, that sometimes determine its visual aspects to be as further down in your app tree as possible or in your component tree as possible. Okay, because some people are like, well, why don't I just put all the state here in app? Okay, and then I just pass it around as I need it. Well, then every time your data changes, app re-renders, re-rendering top, re-rendering middle, re-rendering bottom, re-rendering navigation, re-rendering hero. So you don't get any speed benefit because your entire website is rebuilding itself every time the data changes. Okay. But sometimes there is data that you store in app, okay, that you may need to store at the top. It happens, our application level data that you may want to store in app. So how would I pass it down to top navigation? Well, let's say I have a piece of data in app that does need to get to navigation, but I also need it for bottom. So that's why I have to keep it in app because I need it here and I need it here. So I can't really push it any further down. Okay, so this is where you have to start thinking through sort of what your relationship between your different components are. So in that case, what I could do in React is I have to pass it down first to the top component Okay, and the way you would usually do that is using props. Props just means to pass data as an HTML attribute. So I could pass in that data as, you know, key equals value in the tag, in the sort of the HTML tag that you pass in. And now top has access to that value and then it would pass it again, down, then it would pass it down again to navigation. Okay, that's what's called props. Props just means to pass data down as a property. That's literally it. Okay, state is just data that's inside that component, that's inside the code. And when that data changes, again, that component and everything below it will re-render. So you wanna move it down and sometimes you'll have to lift it up. Because again, let's say I had the state here, but now that I come to think of it, the data that I have stored in top is also needed in bottom. Well, top has no relationship to bottom, so that's not gonna work for me. So then I have to lift state up into app, so that way top and bottom can both access that data, okay? So it's all about, tr basically the two rules in React is, you wanna have your data in the lowest possible component where all the child components who need that data can access it. Okay, so you can't always just, you don't want to be making several copies of the data. I don't have to be making a copy of that same data here in Hero and Navigation because I want to push it so far down. That's not really helpful either. So basically, rea the React game, outside of just creating components and making sure they look and work the way you want, is thinking through where you store your data, how you store your data to get, to minimize the amount of your website that renders every time there's a change, you'd still have all the changing that you want. And again, this is gonna be the same thought process as if you use Angular, Vue nowadays, but React was sort of really the, the framework that pioneered this kind of thinking. So with that, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, this helps you think through a little bit more what you're doing when you're creating a React application, why state matters. Um, again, this is not about syntax, this video. It's not about how to do it. You can watch my other React videos to learn how to do it but this is again the conceptual idea of sort of state, that data that a component uses to do things. Okay, cool, I'll see you guys later on.